Yes, sir. What up, baby? Molly, why didn't you do the salute? You can't, you know we don't want to mess the hair up shit. Paulie doesn't have his SD hat on today, um, and, he, and he said it's because of me. He's been getting heckled by the viewers for for having it on. So, Paulie looks good today. Uh, I cleaned up for our guest. Absolutely. We, we've got the Bayheim brother. I, mean, first, first, I, was, I was really hoping you said you had a date later, but all right, that works too. That ain't him. Paulie? <laughs> Walk his dog later. That's what he's gonna do, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we get before we get started, man, I just want to uh, thank all our viewers who, who've been tuning in with us on the Devo and Chris Joe show. I know Jordan was was uh, telling us that we've been getting a good viewership, some good ratings. So we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, in in today's edition, uh, we got Buddy and Jimmy Bayheim on. It's gonna be an NBA draft edition. Um, just talk about the process that they've been going through. Um, and we'll go back to, you know, some of mine and, and Chris Joe's, um, you know, stories of the draft process and also we'll get into some NBA finals talk and, and we'll see uh, who Buddy and Jimmy think is going to come out on top in uh, the finals. So, uh, Joe, let's let's kick it off like this, Joe. Just give me one of your, uh, I guess, greatest memories when you're going through your draft process. I know it was, it was kind of funny because me and you, we went through it together. Um, yeah, <laughs> we were down in Atlanta, so so give me some of your uh, best memories of going through that process. Uh, I mean, the draft process was it happened so quick. So you know, you said let you get your pick your agent. I was still in school. We had every agency usually has a workout, you know, a trainer. So he came down to Syracuse for a weekend or whatever it was, and we were getting to it. So it kind of gave me a feel for what it was, what was to come. Because, uh, you know, usually you do team workouts or at least two, three guys in a group. I was doing individuals. I had never really done individuals like that at that point. It was always, you know, with managers or whatever it was. I could go at my own pace, kind of. You know what I mean? But he came in there and put the fire under my ass. He was like, come on, Chris, come on, Chris. You know, her talk. Who, her, shit. though. Her. her. Rodney Hurd. Yeah. Shout out Rodney Hurd. If, if you guys don't know Rodney Hurd, man, this – Slick back Jack. That's what they. That's what he's looking like. <laughs> so that was that was different. But uh, once we got to Atlanta, um, you know, it was love. We worked out probably twice a day. You know, we had the weights and the conditioning. We were up there at G Tech. You know, that's where we were working out at, and it was it was cool. Um, then I, my process started. I didn't know how many teams I'd have to work out for at that point, but you know, it ended up being where I worked out for probably like twenty something teams. And uh, it got crazy, man. You know, just traveling from hotel to hotel, having to leave stuff. You can't really do laundry, so you're buying new clothes, having to leave stuff at hotels. You know, it was wild. Um, but my, I, obviously my favorite, you know, pre-draft uh, workout was the Charlotte Hornets because Mike was there, you know what I mean? And it was me, Darius Johnson, Odom. And that's all I remember right now from the workout because he was a fellow Big East guy. But, you know, MJ was in there, and after the workout, like I told probably a couple times on the show, you know, he told me that I shot the shit out of the ball, and that right there was the best moment of my basketball, you know, career at that point. Like, for right. Mike, you, know, you shot the shit out of the ball. It was crazy to me. Like, damn, he shook my hand. He his hand, biggest shit, shook my hand and said, damn, shot the ball. <laughs> I'm like, damn, like, that's crazy. You know, and I really shot the ball well, probably, you know, obviously, right, I shot the ball pretty well that workout, and for him to, you know, give me that, you know, solidified it by him saying it, that was crazy for me. So, you know, I worked out, of course, I was able to meet Pat Riley in Miami. You know, that was super dope, too. That that mafia style, whatever they say about him is true. He got that aura about him. Um, you know, that kiss the ring type of guy. You feel me? Like, he got the slick back, too. <laughs> So that was real cool. Uh, in that same workout, I was able to meet D Wade, which was at that point, you know, I'm just obviously when you're going through this process, these are guys who you've seen for many years on TV. You kind of look up to them as, as far as basketball goes. And to be able to meet so many players um, during that process was amazing. I remember one quick story. Uh, I went to work out for the Bulls. And this is Jimmy Butler is going into his second year, right? And he's in there going crazy. I'm like, yo, what's up, Jimmy? You know what I mean? We're talking, chopping it up. He's like, man, shit is, I'm asking him, like, how is it? You know what I mean? Like, how was, you know, the league, et cetera, et cetera. He's like, yeah, that's cool. You got to work hard as shit. And he's like, but I'm going to work. He was working hard as fuck, bro. He's like, I'm in here every day, three, four hours, get my shots up. And then it just, now that I see him playing today, that shit plays back in my mind. Like, damn, Jimmy Butler really was on some shit early on in his career, even when he wasn't playing, like it didn't just happen overnight. That was in 20. 
2012. You know what I mean? So it's been he's been putting in the work. So to be able to see him do what he does, it, it, it makes complete sense. You know what I mean? But the pre-draft process, man, is is uh, is crazy, especially when you're in a position where you're not top five, top ten, where you could work out for a couple of teams, go out for nice dinners. You know, I was really working out for every team back to back nights, three three days in a row. Not sure what city I'm in, not sure what floor I'm staying on because the hotels all look the same. You know what I'm saying? So it was wild, man. But great experience nonetheless. Yeah, no doubt. So for me, I'm not, I mean, I don't got all that, but for me, I think one workout that stood out, I had a 23 team workout in Minnesota and then right in the front row who was sitting there, we were playing three on three full court, Larry Bird sitting right there full court. You know what I mean? Three on three. So, you know, like you, you talked about those guys, you were, you saw Mike, obviously Mike, but then, you know, Larry, I mean, Midwest, I'm from Michigan. He's from Indiana. Just seeing that going through those type of, experiences during the draft process i mean even just to be there got, got buddy and jimmy like talk about that a little bit just i mean being going through this process especially as brothers and having having each other's back and, and getting to talk about it how special is that man you know coming from you know growing up in cues and, and really going through everything with each other and now to be at this level and then to still be able to do it together talk about that a little bit yeah yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, just living together. We got down in the city about two months ago now, and they've been living together and working out every morning together with about six, seven other guys that we've gotten really close with. And, you know, just going to different places. I just finished up in Atlanta, and Jimmy was there last Friday, and they were telling me, oh, yeah, your brother was here. You know, who's going to shoot it better? <laughs> better player messing like that and it's just really cool but also it's been awesome to see i've seen a cute guy in every place i've been to i saw mcw in orlando i saw west johnson in la at the clippers yeah. i saw our old, the old strength trainer todd in uh, portland oh, yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Huge guy everywhere. I'm about to go to Detroit, obviously, see uh, Troy Weaver and Rob. So it's been really cool to see all these huge family everywhere. And, you know, just being able to talk about workouts with Jimmy has been really cool. And, you know, we obviously are rooting for each other. And it's, you know, it's great having someone here that, that you can be around all the time. Yeah, man, just just really enjoying the process. Obviously, being here with Buddy has been great. And, and like he said, the rest of the guys were here that, that are with the agency just working out with us. It's a really great group of guys. It makes, you know, the, the three or four workouts a day a lot easier. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just, just, just going around and, and, and going to these workouts for these, these NBA teams, you know, thinking back five years ago when I had, you know, no offers coming out of high school and, and now walking into these these unbelievable top of the notch you know facilities for the the greatest basketball programs in the world i mean it's it's pretty crazy i have to pinch myself once in a while I'm just super thankful to be here and sure. just, gonna, just gonna keep pushing and, and keep trying to you know turn these dreams to reality no absolutely so you know, guys take us through kind of the your day-to-day -day. you know when you wake up your workouts your your weight room stuff and then uh, you know, add in like a travel day and, and what, what's that like for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. So the first month before we kind of got into these workouts, it was, it was really ramped up. And, you know, we, we'd wake up probably eight o'clock would be the first on court workout. We go an hour and that's all your, you know, attacking downhill, get into the mid range, get into the rim, dribble moves, stuff like that. Just a lot of, a lot of live stuff like that for the first hour, get like, get breakfast real quick. And then we'd have our movement, movement and conditioning section. So, you know, agility, conditioning you know all that stuff for an hour you know eat lunch maybe lay down for 30 minutes come back down get our lunch, get, get, get some protein maybe get a little snack and then uh, around three o'clock we'd have our shooting for an hour uh, just get a ton of shots up and then um, day would end right there around four and from there we just come right up get our feet up and just you know rest get to bed try to get to bed a little early and then all again the next day so that was the first month. Obviously, once workouts have, have started up, guys have been bouncing around, traveling all over the place, and it's trying to trying to maintain it, but at the same time, keep getting better and prepare for the, the upcoming workouts. But Buddy can tell you a little bit about travel day or whatever. 
Yeah, I mean, this last week I was traveling. Uh, I had two in a row back to back, so that was that was a good experience. But I just finished up my West Coast workouts and did Portland and LA back to back. So that's just you know you travel out for the day, you get there around six or seven, get to the hotel, usually go go find a place to eat, uh, look up spots in different cities. So that's been cool. But um, go out to eat the next morning. They usually pick you up around seven thirty. You get to the facility. You got to do like two hours of you know check on your injury history do your measurements do all that yeah. and that part that part is always tough but uh after that it's you know you play for you work out for an hour you you talk to the front office after you see the, see the people there it's pretty cool you know chauncey bill ups in portland and you know just oh, that's great. tough yeah, that's tough. That was, that was cool. yeah that was that was real cool seeing him there and uh so working out there and then going right after that you fly fly out probably five or six at night go to port go to la and that next morning you, you get picked up again in the morning and go do it again so you do that and then you have the weekend to th this weekend past weekend i stayed out in la and just kind of hung out and worked out and then went to um orlando sunday night for my workout there monday Quick question, quick question for you guys. When you so after the workout's done and you're getting, you're talking to the whether it be the head coach or just the GMs or whoever it is that you're talking with, how many times have you been asked the question, how do you think you'll be able to play, you know, defense in the league, being that it's man to man and you've been playing zone? Has that come up a few times? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the G League combine actually you had to one day it was just like interviews for four hours so I did nine interviews in a row with different teams and it was like I was just re re repeating myself nine times <laughs> and every time it was, you know this is, you're not playing zone anymore how do you you know how do you feel about that and yeah. I had to work yeah. Orlando, like, they said you know buddy wants to play zone at this workout and I you know they just kind of messed with me you know, but Nah, that is, man. They mess with you a lot, definitely. I, I, I feel you. I said the same thing. I'm like, well, you know, the, the zone has man to man principles, and you still got. <laughs> that's why you gotta keep repeating you yourself. Gotta, you gotta right? down for yeah. him. It's, it's man to man for real. Like, yeah. Man, people don't understand the rules are are man to man. Like, it's yeah. You're but, you know, we go guy in front. I mean, we play play a lot of man to man in practice and stuff, obviously, and. I mean, I was only yeah. for one year, so, so I got a little more man experience, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you do. That's true. <laughs> that's that's true. You do. Hey, what's the wildest question they ask you guys in 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 those interviews? Because I know it's like, I mean, Chris Joe, you could uh, vouch for me. Like, they do their due diligence, right? So they're kind of. Yeah, sure. It's more. Than basketball. <laughs> what's the craziest question or the weirdest question that you you've been asked? Uh, well, a team asked me if I would rather be Batman, Robin, or the Joker at one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Bat Batman is my favorite superhero, so I guess him. I don't know what the meaning is. <laughs> that was definitely yeah. kind of weird. There's some good ones. There's just a lot of hypotheticals that they they want to see your thought process behind, like where you can you can really answer it either way. They just want you to justify it one way or another. Um, so right. there's, some, there's, there's some good ones. Like one that was tough is like, do you love to win or do you hate to lose more? Um, you know, would you mm -hmm. rather be a bad player on a really good team or would you rather play a ton on a really bad team? And it's just right, you kind right, of right. play with a lot of them, and, and you just got to be able to explain it, and have a have a good, be able to justify it one way or another. So it's just trying to think through those yeah. in, the, in the moment. They're, they're quick. Um, you know, one is like you get to invite three people to dinner. You know, who and why? So you want to make sure you're thinking of someone that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not you can't say someone you want to hang out with. You know, you want it to be, you know, someone who you could like learn something from. And, and yeah, it's, exactly. You know, it's kind of stuff like that, and it's you know, I've enjoyed the inter inter interviews. I think they're it's cool to just be able to sit down and talk to you know the front office guys, and, and it, it's really made me realize that that I'm I'm pretty interested in, in some front office work, maybe some point down the road. NBA, I think. Yeah, I, no doubt. 
Red Rob in our chat wants to know, uh, buddy, do you get asked about the punch, man? Nobody wants to. Nobody wants a loose cannon on their team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people <laughs> do. Obviously, uh, it happened, but you know, they they understand that it was just a. Uh, it just happens. You make mistakes, but teams definitely ask that, and you have to work out. Some guys have joked around with him, laughed about it, but <laughs> we we actually got a Florida State guy up here who's doing pre draft with us, John Butler. So we've talked about it a little and joked around with it, but you know. It's nothing too serious. <laughs> no, that shit wasn't anything. If they if they upset about that, man, come on, man. God damn. We, that was some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, I got I got a question for you, Jimmy, because I was talking to um I was talking to Jack yesterday. Shout out to Jack too. Uh, yeah. shout out to Rock yeah. Station. He, yep. he was telling me that I forget it might have been Milwaukee he said you were at. And they were and they were asking you what player do you compare yourself to? And yeah. he told me you said, and he told me you said Joe Angles. Now, do I get any credit for that? Because you I definitely remember get back. You definitely get credit. So you, this is why it's funny because a lot of teams do ask you. They want to see like who you see yourself as in the league. And um, it's funny because you, you really were the first one to call me Joe Angles. I think that was that was bro, way back when we, when we were just working out. We were out. working out, and I said that. Yeah. I said, I said, yeah. bro, you know who you are. I said you Joe Angles. Yeah. <laughs> was that a while ago? Um, yeah, it was a long. It was like three, four years ago, probably. But then wow. starting this this summer, just through workouts and stuff, you know, Bull and those guys, they started calling me Joe Ingles too. I don't know if they ever heard you say it or if they just thought it on their own too. So throughout the whole summer, people, and even into the season, people were calling me Joe on the team and stuff like that. So that's always my <laughs> when they ask for a player confidence. I mean, it's a really good one because he's he's had a really successful career. So you know, I take it as a good one. Left hand and put it on the ground, like crafty when he gets in there. Like he has a good, like that. I'm telling you, good bro. That was, that was finish, shoot it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, High man. IQ. Yeah, he's awesome. He's awesome. Hey, buddy. <laughs> What's real up? quick, uh, just those those two games that you played um, at the combine, the G League combine. Just walk us through that process and how that was, how that experience was for you. Uh, game one, going into game two, and just kind of walk us through that that whole, you know, this is kind of how what your feelings were uh, during game one and two. Yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, just playing with new guys, playing with some really good players. Obviously, Brady Manick, Marcus Sasser, um, JD Noche, mm -hmm. a lot of good guys. Um, on my team and at the camp overall. So first, just going into just you know realizing there's a lot of good players out there at any level and. Uh, nice. Uh, the first game obviously got some good looks but it, you know it was, it was new for me i'm used to playing 40 minutes and after four minutes <laughs> i'm getting thumbed out and about 20 minutes but you know overall i thought i could have obviously done better didn't shoot as well the first game and didn't really take it at too seriously didn't really stress about it knowing that i had another day the next day and obviously the next game got going early and was able to get in the rhythm and you know my teammates were working for me which was nice and got to you know stay on the court a little longer but those games are it's hard to get in the rhythm they're tough games it's uh you know it's a lot of guys yeah, trying to prove themselves try to stay another day same for the, the nba combine so you got guys that are you know, maybe not trying to look for you as much but my teammates did a great job setting me up the second and was able to get going and just, you know, realize that I'm, I'm one of the elite shooters on this draft, I believe, and just going to continue to work. 100%. And do but, uh, you know, it was a good experience overall and uh, learned a lot, met a lot of good guys, and it was a really good process overall and uh, learned a lot those two days. Nice. How was it doing in front of uh, AO was on the opposing team, right? He was on the on the coaching <laughs> yeah, staff on the yeah. other team. So you were able, you were able to bust his ass a little bit. So shout out to AO. He got the ball no, now. You know what I mean? But yeah, I seen him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Jimmy. Think, I think, uh, oh my fault. Go ahead, buddy. I think he he left. Uh, he said he told them to leave me to get, let me get some looks and make me look good. But now nah, he texted me. <laughs> yeah, it was good. See shout name. out to AO. <laughs> Yes, sir. Cues everywhere. Jimmy, how about the, the, the Portsmouth invitation? How was that for you in um, those games that you played? Was it, It's probably more of the same. Guys are trying to get something out of it. So how was that for you to be able to, you know, jump into a situation like that and try to, you know, get your looks and get shots, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, definitely more of the same kind of what Buddy said. I mean, it's just you have to, you have to be aggressive at those things and um, not just aggressive to get your shots, 
to grab make a play to, to make the right play and you know um, going into those you have to keep in mind that you know teams have watched you all season and they know what you do they know what you're capable of and it's just trying to play within yourself and uh, you know just make the right plays and know that if you miss a couple shots it's not going to undo what you did for a whole season so it's just kind of keeping that in mind and you know, having fun with it having fun with playing against these you know the best the best players in the country that for that event it was the best best seniors in the country so it was fun playing alongside those guys and and just again again it's to play in front of you know all those all those NBA you know scouts and front office guys and and uh, I don't know if you guys know AO was actually my my team's coach for that one too so oh, wow, uh, I didn't know yeah that. I, got the, I got the first hand coaching experience I was in front how of was that how was that with AO. He did a great job, I think. I mean, he, he was really good. You can tell that, that the NBA assistant coaching programs really helped him a lot. I think he was really well-spoken, and, and uh, he's definitely got a future there. So it was, it was really fun seeing that firsthand wow, and getting to play for him. Up, man. He kind of let me do my thing there. So, so it was cool. It was really awesome to, it's, you know, coming full circle there, you know, uh, growing up. Yeah. He's one of the, you know, when I really started to become more aware and more interested and, and following the team closely, you know, he was one of those first guys, you know, <laughs> breaking the backboard at Midnight Madness and, uh, and yeah. you know, <laughs> like that, having coaching me at an event like that, it was, it was really cool for sure. So just really enjoyed the event all in all. Shout out to AO, I man. Got a, sir. Yes, sir. I got a question for all of you, if, you know, all, all for you. What's it like in that situation? You guys say that you're there with a groups of people, but – you're all going for the same spots, right? You know, like what? What's it like? How do you keep a, like a friendship and that kind of mentality when you're all fighting for the same spots? Oh, it's no friendship up when you when you out there competing. No, you. I mean, it's food on the table, Polly. So you, I'm trying to eat. So I'm going out there competing. I think. I mean, I think guys know that though. When you're in that type of setting, I mean, everybody is. You know, from AU growing up playing against everybody is familiar with each other, and then obviously. You know, through college and through you know, you know, playing in your career in college, you're you get more familiar with each other. But when guys are going out there and I'm competing, that's my mindset. I'm not worried about if Chris Joe out there. He know I'm trying to go at his head. You know, same thing with you know with Buddy and Jimmy. I mean, we've done it. You know, we we've all done it. We we've, we've been in the basement. You know, going at each other. I've seen. <laughs> you know, I've I got to sit back a little bit because I got to see like the the real you know brotherly competition. You know, when they're <laughs> No, that's a travel, or and they getting at each other like, you know, that's that was real shit. Like these these guys are out here competing, and that's, you know, when you out there playing ball, that's what it's about. But when when you step off the floor, you have that respect for for each other, and and you back to being boys. Since you mentioned the basement, the best the best of the summer, better than me and Buddy going at it. D net came one time. And a game finished, and, and one of you guys were mad at each, the other one for a foul or something. And I sat, oh. I sat on the sidelines just getting the water for five minutes, and the whole time going back and forth. It was so, it was. I was just sitting there dying laughing. I mean, it was so funny. So, I tell you what, <laughs> D Nick. I'm tell you what. It, I mean, we've had summers where me and D Nick literally like, cause you know Hop. You know what Hop is. Hop's an instigator anyway. Yeah. Hop's gonna instigate. He's like, oh, oh, you gonna let him push you like that? You gonna let him push you like that? E? You going That's how you gonna let him treat you? So you know me, I'm out. My ego kicking right away. So you know me and D Nick damn near got into the fisticuffs a little bit, a few times. But like what you saw, what you saw, Jimmy, like that was like that was some light shit. Like D, yeah, that was not I mean, the ultimate competitor. Yeah. And you know yeah, me, I'm. Just, yeah. I already knew you were, but you know, after obviously after being around D Nick so much this whole year, I, you guys are really one A and one B that I've probably seen. Just you know, D Nick still jumping in drills and start trying to cheat and you know whatever it is, but he can tell you yeah. too. You know, he he did it all year, and I mean, it was it was just awesome to, to have him around he, and all he, that. You don't sure, expect so. that of D Nick. D Nick's so soft spoken, like yeah. just so calm. You know, <laughs> but then you you put him between them four lines. It's a different animal. <laughs> Yeah, yes, sir. Absolutely. Even playing manager walk, like manager walk on pickup, he's he's talking, talking, talking <laughs> junk to the, to the walk. As we used to love walk. So, yeah, that that sure. don't leave you. Like you get a little bit slower, you can't jump as high, not as fast, but that competitive spirit doesn't leave. But when I was on staff, <laughs> me and G Mac, you see G Mac yeah, out yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, same hey, same same way. Way. right there. Yeah, yeah, they're psychos. Yeah. Yeah, you, you gotta be a psycho though. You gotta, you, you gotta, yeah, you, gotta you gotta have it in you. Yo. And I think that's with with anything. Like, 
you know, if any, with any, if you're like really good at anything, you got to be a little bit fucking crazy. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Because because to get to that level, you got to do some shit that no one that no one wants to do. Everyone is scared to do. So you'd be like, oh, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and you know what I mean? I, I might fuck up, I might not. That's just how it go. Yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good players out there, and you got to be you have to have that different different mindset for sure. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, Paulie, so yeah, to answer your question, he answered it well, man, but it's tough. You don't ever want to be, even Summer League, for instance, which is coming up, you know, you got you got a scoring point guard on your team, it, it could be a long fucking Summer League. You know, you got a point guard, because then it's like you got the ball 90% of the time, and you're trying to score, you know what I'm saying? So it's tough, but like Jimmy said, a lot of, hopefully there's some young fellas that's going to listen to this eventually. You got to play within yourself, man, and everybody knows what you did for four years, two years. They know what you did already, so don't get caught up in, I got to score, I got to get a triple-double, or whatever it is that you may be thinking, because they know already what you're capable of. They just want to see it up close and personal, you know what I mean? And people are paid a lot of money to be able to evaluate talent. And, you know, if you have a, a bullshit point guard that's taking all the shots or not really setting guys up, they know why Buddy only shot two, three threes in a game. Like, come on, they know what it is. So definitely keep keep that mindset, play within yourself. You know what I mean? Don't don't get too upset, never too high, never too low. Now, that was, that was big, what, what you said, Jimmy, like being able to play within yourself. Because how many people have you seen, just even in workouts, but the Portsmouth G League, whatever it was, getting out of character. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. people are, whether it's like, you know, now this dude, you look at him the whole season, now he's trying to jab, cross you back. You didn't, right. I never saw you do that. Like they, right. like those, like those said, those scouts, they get paid to, they know what your strengths are. They want to see if you're going to play within the team concept, play within yourself, and show me what the fuck you can do. You know, buddy, right. go ahead out there and shoot that motherfucker. Jimmy, go ahead, shoot that motherfucker. Go make a play. You know what I mean? Like, show him you can yeah. be crafty and, and be versatile. Like, when guys get out of character, you can see that right away. I got outside. Because you know top. what it is, fellas? Oh, go ahead, Jimmy. My fault. Go ahead. I was just going to say, outside of, like, the top top 10 teams picking, you know, no one else is looking for a first, second, third, or probably even fourth option. They're looking for <laughs> exactly. five, three, five through ten. And, you know, can you make an open shot? Can you make the right play? Can you yeah. play defense? And I think Alex Caruso said it best. The G League, you know, you got guys in the G League and in those settings trying out to be like going to a job interview and trying to be the CEO when they need a janitor. And it's just, like it said, and you get Alex yeah, Caruso, like that. just so it's, it's. I think that's one quote that that really stuck with me. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. I like that. That's real, right there. So Jimmy, t talk about like talk about um that a little bit like in those workouts. Like, how hard is it to be able to stay within that team play when you see so many other guys getting out of character? Like in the G, like guys are trying to score and show what they could do. How tough is it to kind of stay in your role and stay disciplined and knowing doing what you're supposed to do? Yeah, I think it can, it can be hard sometimes for sure. You know, maybe five or six plays go by and you're just you feel like you're just kind of out there. You know. Um, not really having much of an impact on the game, and you you get answered. You like I got I want to do I got to do something. I got to show show that I can do do something. Out there. And then you kind of you get out of character. So it's just you know it's keeping in mind that it, you know your opportunity is going to come, and and it's, it's it's tough. It's very tough. It's easier said than done to play within yourself because you, know, you always always want to be making the play, um, trying to impact the game, trying to trying to do something. Um, but you know, you, you just gotta just you gotta try to remember, you know, what what they're looking for, and and uh, just just trying to wait for your, your opportunity. But it's it's definitely uh, easier said than done. A lot of gems right there, fellas. I've been overseas playing. I'm like, fuck, I ain't touched the ball three, four times on the court. Next time I touch it, I don't give a fuck what's going on. I'm letting it fly. He a knuckleball, <laughs> but I'm shooting it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to put it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's been too long. Like, it's a frustration shot, but he, hey, I'm going to shoot it. Yeah. So it's, it's tough, right. man. It's a thin line, man, for real. For sure. They, Especially, buddy, what, do you, you know? what about you, bud? Hey, go ahead, bud. Yeah. yeah, I think one oh, of the sorry, biggest you. things also, I mean, just – just personally myself i mean i'm not teams are telling me i mean i'm a catch and shoot guy i'm gonna run off screens come off handouts whatever i'm not gonna put on the floor much maybe a pump fake two dribble or something really if anything so i know that there are some times where i'm not gonna get it as much if it's an iso type of game or something so you know i think the biggest thing is just communicating 
try to do other things, trying to work on my defense, just get better. And, you know, these workouts are also a good chance to just work on your game and get better, get get in better shape than before, you know, get playing, get up and down, try to get an offensive rebound and just make other things happen, set screens, just uh, space the floor always. So just do other things and try to communicate as much as possible and just show, you know, I can do, do other things and be a good teammate always. But like Chris Joe hey, said, if I get one, I'm going to just practice. Go up. If I get a little space and I get the ball, in practice. <laughs> you know, if you don't, I'll be right. mad as shit. I'll be mad as shit if you didn't. God, you better shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Nah, so I'm definitely gonna. If I get, I'm gonna be aggressive for sure. No doubt. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys about the format of the NBA workouts. Now, I'm pretty sure it's probably more the same. Three on three should still be the format. But how much time do you put in actually competing? Because I remember doing like drills at the end of a workout where. You're a defendant, and you got to get five stops before you can get out the drill. You know what I mean? Or you were playing one on one full court or two on two. So, and then we did, we probably did like 10, 15, maybe 20 max of shooting. So, what's the format like, like nowadays? Is it more the same or run us through like one of your workouts in, in LA, for instance, and Jimmy, maybe yours in Atlanta? Yeah, LA. So, it's, uh, First, we did three on three uh, against the staff. So like West was on, West was in it. Uh, a couple other their staff oh, just. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just get a warm up in, and uh, then after that, it was what well, we did a warm up. We kind of, every time you do like a ten minute ball handling, finishing around the rim, kind of pull up jumpers, warm up for five ten minutes, and then it's you know usually right into competitive stuff three on three. So then we go you know actually usually we've been doing one on ones a lot. So you do five ten minutes of one on one, two three spots, one game, so whoever can get the most stops, one games, you know, most most scores. So do that for five, ten minutes and then it's three on three for about thirty, thirty five minutes, uh, full court games in different situations, yeah. pick and roll. Can't switch on defense. You have to, you know, help on pick and rolls, low man, and just stuff like that. So you do that for 30 minutes. So keep track of who who's winning, who's not. And then after that, they usually, you know, you do a for Clippers. They had a they had their 105 shooting drill. So five five shots at uh, different spots, all off the move, doing different things with with your partner. So you do that for about 10 to 10 15 minute drill. And then after that, you usually finish up the workout. They usually end it with a shooting drill. So that's that's usually how it goes. But I'd say 40, 40 of the hour is competitive. 40 minutes of the hour is competitive three on three, one on one. Yeah, I mean, pretty all, all the teams, I think, are pretty similar in their structure. You know, everyone has their own little wrinkles here and there. But like what he said, very three on three dominant. Um, teams just want to see you compete. They want to see how you are in those environments first how you talk, how you how you go at one another, and just stuff like that. Because like I said, they've seen you play all year. They want to see you in those settings. And then, um, you know, you do the 100 shots, 100 threes. Most places do that. And um, and then whatever teams have individual rank, wrinkles, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, stuff like that. So um, very three-on-three -three dominant, though, which has been fun. So you know, it's fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. Competing is always fun. So shooting 100 threes. So far, I'm sure you guys both did that. What's your what's your what's been your uh, high this far, you know, throughout the process out of 100 threes? Uh, I think I got 74, um, 74 out of 100 all on the move uh, in Atlanta. Ooh, but okay. you know, most of them have been 70s, but nothing too, nothing crazy yet. Nothing in there. I'm trying to get an 80 spot. So yeah, yeah, yeah I got a little 80 ball. I hit 70, 71, so I'm usually high 60s, low nice. 70s. I'm trying to get to the mid 70s. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So all on the move. But did you hit 81? Did you hit 81 for the Knicks, bud? I just I, I read that. I thought. Yeah, that was that was a, just 80 shots though. But oh, they, it's just they, 80 they, shots. They had a they had a hundred draw at the end that was all on the move and was a little different. That was just catch and shoot. Right. That little eight, that hundred shot on the move, that's that fatigue start to set in a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah it's that's tough. tough. It's, it's the yeah. end of the workout too, so it's it's a long played, day. Yeah. You already played, and you know it's tough because yeah. you only do that you only do it once at each place. So they really, you know, if you do do it all right, then you don't get to do it again there. So it's kind of you do it really good at one spot. The other team does teams don't know that, so it's definitely uh, exactly. a little. Bit. So it's it's good. So though. is that is that something that you guys? I mean. I remember doing my pre-draft when I was a herd in Atlanta. He kind of tried to prep me for what I could see potentially at workouts. Is that something that now you were doing beforehand or that now that you've seen it, you start doing it more in your workouts when you're back in, uh, in New York? 
on the move. Yeah, we take, we've done all the shots that you do with these hundred shooting drills every day all summer. You know, it's it's all the movements that you would usually do. So it's just we always end workouts with getting a ton of shots on the move, especially in our our shooting workout later in the day. It's doing all those you know slide ups, lifts. Uh, yeah. Not transition, you know, you know, all the yeah. ones. Yeah, it's just doing, make sure we're making sure we've got a ton of reps and all those, so that we're, we're as prepared as we can possibly be. Hey, I remember, I remember, uh, I, I had a workout in Detroit, and um, it was against uh, Pat Beverly. Was <laughs> so Pat Beverly was <laughs> in the workout? Yeah, it, it was him, Dominic James, and I forget it was two other guys, an overseas guy. Um, and I forget, but we were playing three on three, and that's when I first f- figured out like this motherfucker right here, this motherfucker was so, re- <laughs> was so re- relentless. I'm talking about a get by a cross, and then he, he coming back on my head. I'm like, damn, motherfucker. this he was like a little pest everywhere. But I so we played three on three after going at this motherfucker guarding me the whole time, and then I go into my 100, 100 spot shooting drill. So I'm like, damn, so I already know. You talking about you tired at the end of the workout? <laughs> this motherfucker chasing me the whole time, Pat Beverly. That's why I was like, damn, he gonna find a spot. I think at the time, I don't know if he was coming out of college or if he came came from Russia or something. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's he at was, the end, he, man. He was getting after. Yeah, he's tough. Yo, that's that, Pat Pat Beverly. Like you said, man. Like teams, like guys get mixed, mixed up. Like, oh yeah, I know you can score that motherfucker ball. And you can ball. You really good. They don't need that shit. You know what I mean? Like, they don't need, like, that's what the NBA is. Like, guys, I think a lot of guys, like, who don't make the NBA sometimes, they're like, oh, no, I'm not good. No, but you you didn't fit what they what they needed or what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like, guy, Pat Beverly, he, they need that. I love to play with a guy like Pat Beverly. He, I don't got to do all the shit he got to do now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I can just focus on scoring. He, Draymond Green, he makes it so much easier for Steph Clay, Jordan Poole, everybody on the team, like they, he's doing all the stuff that guys really don't want to do. Like all the like double cross, step back, step that the shit that look good. Yeah, you know I mean Draymond, they, those guys ain't doing the shit that Draymond's doing. You know what I mean? So that I think that's what a lot of young kids not understanding. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. they going in, the, and that's another thing I want to ask you guys. Like, how do you balance like expanding on your game, but still? still working on what you know is going to get you there you know what i mean because you don't you don't want to be you don't want to be like a guy who's just one who's limited but so when you in the league if you're in the league that that might just but be what they want you to do just that i just want you to be able to shoot but at the same time how do you balance it out being able to want to expand your game and be a better overall player yeah i think that's a good question um you know i think I think, you know, I don't shoot many threes off the dribble. Um, I'm a catch and shoot guy, really. Um, probably never will he will to shoot too many off the dribble. But I do think that, you know, working on shooting threes off the dribble helps you with your catch and shoot. It makes it almost feel easier. You feel your rhythm better when you're taking, you know, those tougher shots. So I think it's, you know, you always want to spend the most time on the on the stuff that you know you're going to do a ton and the stuff you know you're going to need to do a ton. But, you know, when you do spend, you know, those maybe if you do an hour workout, you spend 10, 15 minutes trying to expand your game. When you work on those tougher tougher moves, tougher shots, it helps, you know, make those, those easier ones simpler, I think. So I think it's always good to, you know, work on expanding your game, but keep it in mind, um, you know, devoting most of the time to the stuff you're going to do the most. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. pretty similar stuff. I think just also focusing on, you know, some keys, even as a shooter, just even getting my shot off quicker, getting my footwork better, uh, always having my same shot, having my balance. So even just improving as a shooter, which which is my main strength, just get better in that aspect. And then off the dribble stuff, other stuff that, you know, maybe down the road can, can happen and can transform and, you know, add that to my game. But right now just focused on shooting the bat, being the best shooter possible. Yeah, because you never know when you might have to pull that trick out the bag. You never know it's a shot clock situation. You might got to between um, you might got to. So just the fact that you're working on it for those 10, 15 minutes a, a day, which is consistency, right? You'll be prepared. It won't seem foreign to you when you do it. So yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, you never know. You never the the side dribble three I made it and Barclays against. Oh uh, yeah, super <laughs> tough. So, that's the only one. I, that's the only one I took all year. So you never know. <laughs> you what about, what about for one shot? What about when you came down the middle though? When was you the, which one the with that? 
Oh, I guess we're here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had it. You he know, once in a while. He, once in a while, man, once in a while, just to let people know it's there if I, if I need to, but just, you know, most of the time, I'll be below that right? once in a while, once in a while. Keep that one. Keep that one in the bag. You got to keep that one in the bag tucked right here for when you, they don't, they forget us. Yeah. yeah. That's like, like Eric never lets us forget he dunked it against Seton Hall twice in a yeah, game. Twice. Twice. And every show he's got to remind yeah, us. Yeah, Jordan, we got – well, not every show, Paul. Not, now you're over-exaggerating, but <laughs> Jordan, you do have the Every clip. other. Jordan, we you, gotta do, get the, you do have the clips. We have the CD. But, Jordan, hold on. Before you do that, get to the clip of uh, uh, Coach Beheim calling Paul an idiot before we, we – we got to get that. <laughs> Could you do that, we please? gotta get those. I gotta see those dunks. I haven't seen them. We gotta get them on. Get them on Twitter. Yeah, Nobody's shit. seen them. They need to clean that up. It's, gra- <laughs> it's grainy as shit. <laughs> it's grainy as shit. Can I tell you this real quick? And and one of those dunks was on a commercial. It was on the SNY. Come on, man. I got. I don't fucking care what you guys think. <laughs> they, they, they might. They might. Owe you, they might owe you a little money for that. You, yeah. What's your nil money? <laughs> Oh, oh, come on, don't get me started on that. Now you're rubbing it in my face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> in my face. Guys, I must come admit, on, the uh, Paulie's an idiot clip, I'm still digging in the archives, but I found another all time Jim Beheim Paulie roast. If you Let's do it. The Devo show with Gomez. It was a, kind of a backhanded compliment. He, he loves those. <laughs> he loves those. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it, man. We got it or what? Okay. Billy players make a uh, million dollars uh, or less, it says. This is coming from uh, Polly over in the corner. Wow. 65%. That's what oh. he says. He, he must have done the research you mean, there. But that's not the minimum then. The minimum is 650, so they make more than the minimum. More, yeah. more than the minimum. Yeah. It's all in the wording, Coach. All yeah, in the wording. that's true. Polly <laughs> came up with something good for once. I it, mean, it, it, how long have he, he been here? I mean, for... Like years. 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 And finally, look at that, Polly. He comes up with a nugget. After years. <laughs> we're going to have to give him, you know, like a 10% bonus of his salary, which would be, what, $100? About 100 bucks. Paul, you keep working. You can probably retire in about 50 years. To put that in context, we were talking about baseball players, like, making the huge contracts and like 65% of them make below the minimum, you know? So I'm glad, I'm glad you found that Paul, because he was asking me about to get the numbers on that for like a week. I swear the same conversation. <laughs> well, that's, that's, what, that's how it came up. That's how it came up. <laughs> that's why he stopped asking me one day. Thank you. I appreciate you. Finding me. <laughs> so what's the minimum? The minimum is 650,000. Yeah. That's the hell of a minimum shit. I'll take that. <laughs> oh, man. Sign, right? yeah. Well, they, now that we saw that, what, what's the funniest thing you guys have ever seen your dad say to the media? You know, like what's the what's the funniest thing you've seen him say? And no, not the ten games. We'll take the ten games out of the one. Oh, man, that was funny as hell, though. That was funny that as shit. Was good. <laughs> I, you can't beat the the microphone, the microphone slap is yeah. such a it's a hidden yeah. gem. <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even close. We used to we used to, we used to they have this slow mo on YouTube too. Slow mo. We used to, we used to pull that up when like like uh, well Adrian Adrian Osh would be over and he couldn't he would be like on the floor dying laughing and after like the third time we played it through my mom's laughing everyone's laughing my dad would come over and like slam the computer behind. And it's funny because you gotta know the backstory. That was after that was after Eastern Michigan hit the full court Cleveland, shot. Cleveland State. Or Cleveland State. Yeah, my bad. Oh, 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 oh shit! Uh, that, was was my, that, that was that. Game. They lost. Yeah. So we were we go to every every one win. We weren't in the presser for that one because they lost. We went home, and we see that like a couple of days later. I mean that that's the best one for me. For hilarious. Sure. That's, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, that was Cleveland State. Yeah, yeah. yeah Norris Cole. And, dumb ass shot, bro. Yeah. No, that was Sick. so that was Cedric Jackson that hit that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 we, I, remember, cause I, we I, was, uh, I was, yeah. No, go ahead. I was, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. I was ball boying. 
I was sitting right on the hoop at the, the end he shot it from. And like I stood up and I was like, oh my, like that, it was good. And it went in and like, I just, like, I crumbled, like just started crying. Like, that, was, that, was awful. that was from the other, was other free throw line. Yeah, yeah. Bro, other free throw line. <laughs> Bro, that we was the longest I defeated. ever stayed in a locker room ever. We stayed in a locker room, bro. We were in there for like almost two hours, if I'm not mistaken. It was a minute. I remember at that point, you know, it was people. We came out. There was no one left in the dome. Everyone went home. I'm like, damn, we've been in here for a minute. I didn't even shower. I took yeah. a shower pill, got back to South Campus, and did what I had shower to do. Pill. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> shower pill. Yo, in Europe, they take a lot of shower pills. You know that. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No, no question. They take the pill, then they just throw some axe on. I'm like, God damn, brother, the shot right there. Smell like a wet dog. Uh, no. Hey, that, we would have been undefeated in, in non-conference play. That was the last the game in non-conference. And we, yeah. oh, oh, man. Failure. I didn't know that. Yeah. You guys were like 14, yep. 14 or something, 15, 14 or around there? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that yep. happened? Yep. Wow. That was, I mean, that was sick. That was, that was devastating. That was devastating. Oh, I can't even imagine. Joe, was that your freshman year? No, it was my freshman year, yo. Yeah, and then we went and beat – Um, no, no, that was before. We beat Kansas and them in the um, at Thanksgiving. In Florida. Yeah, John, Johnny hit a shot to send it to overtime. A versus mm-hmm. Kansas. Yeah. yeah. I remember that one. That was that was awesome. I remember that one. Yeah, Andy played real well, too. Oh. I want to ask you guys something else. I, we talked to Scoop Jardine about this, and he talked about Syracuse's Twitter being brutal. You know, what, what's the funniest thing you've ever seen written about yourselves on, on social media? <laughs> it's, hard to, it's, hard, it's hard to laugh at. Uh, I stayed off it pretty good after, you know, about halfway through the year. but uh, Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> There's a lot, man. There's a lot being said out there. Some crazy stuff. Um, the ruthless, I mean, though. Like, just, 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 some of you have to laugh insane. about. You know what I mean? People call you a Division three player or something like that. After all, you know, you <laughs> don't have to do. You have to laugh at those. And, and it's, yeah. it's funny because they they really believe it and they mean it. And I'm like, you're. I mean, it's there's some delusion. You know, some you, of them. You know, you know, yeah. you literally know nothing about. What yeah, you're talking about. They just, it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Some of the people that try to break down X's and O's, it's you just gotta laugh. You know, I don't know people that have no idea. That, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's just part of it. Everyone yeah. happens. It happens to everyone. You know, I've always said that yeah. Steph Curry will get it. You know, obviously we're gonna get it a little bit. So it's just it's part of it, and it's just you know trying to tune it out as best you can and remembering that it's a small percentage of the fans, and most of them, most of them are with you all the way. So I mean, it is what it is. Exactly. Funny yeah, it's, but it's, it's, funnier, a, it's funnier when it's not about you, I'll say. <laughs> yeah, true. It's a thin line, though. It's a thin line be, when, when you get start getting a little bit disrespectful, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, some of the shit, you be like, come, come on, man. And, and, and two, because, that, like, I guess the average person who's not, you know, playing at a high level, uh, you know, sport, whatever it is, they don't understand like the time, commitment, sacrifice, dedication, discipline, like that goes into it. So like when you saying all that bullshit, like they, they don't understand all, all the stuff that goes into getting there. You know right. what I'm saying? Like they, like it, you, if you're at that level, we talked about it. Whatever you're, if you're at a high level with anything, like you sacrificing something, like like being with people, being with your family, being with your friends. Like Joe, you talked about on the show before, you sacrifice moving out of the country. You know what I'm saying you went to you went to DC so you could pursue this basketball shit. Like so when people start talking like that, that's when I kind of get like I, I start feeling like that. Like, come on, man. Like that's disrespectful. You you don't understand how you know all this hard work he put in the sacrifice of time away from his family. Like that's yeah, it's funny and shit. You can get like shit on Twitter doing all that. But man, that shit pissed me off sometimes when you see that shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, no no, no, absolutely. <laughs> You that's why I had to get up. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was getting mad. It, it is disrespectful sometimes, and you know, it's people hiding behind burners and and stuff like that. Like yeah. you wouldn't never say no, this no. in real life, face to face. I mean, it's just it's stuff like that. But I mean, like you I said, know be hilarious. Is that one day, motherfuckers should be. Oh yeah, come to practice tomorrow. We, we, we practice at the dome at five. Come show me, motherfucker, what you would have yeah. done in this situation. <laughs> come, you know what I mean? Come show oh, me. Come say what you just typed to me. <laughs> Come, come, come say what you type to me. Come, come holler at me and say, like, come on, man. Like, that's, 
that's that's crazy. But yeah, that's some <laughs> bullshit. It, it, it's probably because it's guys wearing that fucking SD hat. That's what it is sometimes. <laughs> well, uh, well, Eric, you you host the post game show, and and you hear the guys. Like, how hard is it for you guys to, like, hear people call in and, like, like this guy's working, a, like, he's sitting at a desk all day and then he's going to break down why the defense failed? Holy, sometimes they call in and it's so ridiculous, I, it makes me feel like I have nothing to say. Like, I, I, I you, making me, you making me feel fucking dumb. You know what I'm saying? When you say it, so now I don't even have a response for that. Like, he's like, well, why don't they fucking do... I don't even know what the fuck to say to that shit. You you obviously don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You know, you just calling in to get some airtime or some shit. You know, but that's, could you ever just hang up on them? I mean, no, it's all respectful. Like it's respectful. Like, oh, okay. you know, I just say shit. It's like Steve, what do you got? You know what I mean? Like Steve, <laughs> throw it just. <laughs> I've you always, know, I've always pers- personally, I've, I've always gotten more upset like when people say stuff about about my dad more so than myself because it's like. You probably haven't even played basketball before, and he's coached for yeah, you know, exactly. 50 years, Hall of Famer. Like he, he, he's in practice every day watching us and stuff like that. He knows who to play. He knows what to do. I mean, everyone makes mistakes, obviously, but you know those those are the ones that usually get me more upset than even talking about my own stuff. So I don't know how he's done it all these years. Credit to him for only going off as many times as he has um, in the media. Oh, sure. <laughs> when it's every day and someone's critiquing you every single day, something that you're a professional at. It, it takes a toll on. I mean, that's why I give him, you know, all the credit in the world for yeah. for, trying, for doing his best to, you know, just keep his head down and keep going. No doubt, man. Chris, you you always ask this question of our guests, and I doubt it's happened to these two. But either of you two ever get kicked out of practice? One time early in the summer, the only story I really have is he said something and. I disagreed, um, and our relationship's always been very, you know, compatible. <laughs> we love arguing and stuff like that. Always have loved arguing about basketball, or whatever. And it's what I—it's one of my favorite things about our relationship. But you know, obviously, first couple weeks of workouts, you know, you can't can't do that to your coach. Um, and he kind of said yeah. something. I—I didn't even say anything back because I knew knew better than say something. But I just kind of like made a small face look the way and he got right up out of his chair, and I was like, oh, here it goes. And like, you know, I mean, never, never, never even. <laughs> Came close to making that mistake again, so um, it's just you know you gotta know what what he's looking for, and what what not to do. Once oh, you sure. once you figure that out, it's, sure. it's not, not too hard to stay on his good side. Hey, did he did he like ever uh, like you guys go home and at night and then he kind of like walks by and says some slick shit like, "Yeah, mother, I, I know you weren't gonna say shit like some shit like that." <laughs> Yeah, I know you wasn't gonna say it. Yeah, Hall of Fame, James Naismith, motherfucker. What you mean? I wish you would. I wish you would say something, motherfucker. <laughs> nah, I, don't, I don't think so. He's humble, he's humble with us, but yeah, uh, maybe, you know. yeah, I would do some shit like that. I, I would do some shit like that. Like if you if you kind of gave me some shit at practice, you know, I'm I'm walking through the house with my motherfucking Hall of Fame ring or some shit, and I'm be. And I, yeah, motherfucker, I wish you would say some shit. My fucking <laughs> Olympic ring. Olympic ring. You see that fucking picture, LeBron and Melo hugging me and shit? You better go down <laughs> go, shoot, go shoot some motherfucking free throws, and, and you gonna learn. Because he forgot more He forgot more than a lot of us ever fucking learned. You know what I'm saying about the game? No, like, that's what these, these people that's talking cool. shit, like, they, that man forgot more than no, you ever he, fucking know. <laughs> His memory is crazy. Like just the other when I was in Q's, whatever it was, two, three weeks ago, and I was sitting next to him and I had I asked him a question. He broke down. He remembered he said something about my sophomore year, what game it was, damn near how much time was on the clock. Like, <laughs> God damn. Yeah, yeah it's, we, it's, crazy. it's crazy. We watch it we watch a game and like something crazy will happen at the end of the game and he'll be like, That reminds me of 1981 when we were playing <laughs> Indiana in, in Hawaii and with two minutes left, yeah. so and so. I'm like, yo, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not, I love it. <laughs> well, you know, it it's cool. To watch them. Hey guys, what? Was, so, uh, oh, go ahead, Joe. Go, go ahead, ahead, Joe. Kick it off. No, I was gonna, I was gonna ask him about the playoffs, but go ahead if you have something else. Okay, yeah. Let me get before after this one. So, through all the workouts, you guys, like you talked about meeting with the front office guys, coaches, GMs, guys like that. What's the best? 
piece of advice that you got from one of those guys going through those work, or it could be anybody, you know, workout guys, whatever it is. So what's, what's one of the best pieces of advice that you got? Uh, personally for me, uh, I met with the next front office Tib, coach Tibbs and, and all of them. And it was great. Um, but they just said it for me as a shooter to, you know, obviously watch film, know who I'm playing against, know, you know, watch, you know, some of the great shooters that played, but most importantly, just be in the best shape possible, be in the best shape on the floor as a shooter. You gotta be able to move without the ball, be able to run around for a while. So just that, um, obviously defensively, just qu having quick feet, being able to move and keep, keep your guy in front for just, you know, one, one little, you know, one move or two moves and then there's going to be help. So just little things like that has helped a lot. But meeting with the Knicks and talking to them for a while, really, you know, they gave me some good advice. Yeah, I think there's been a lot. I, I always ask at the end of everything, just, you know, you guys have been here. What, what's like your advice? And um, I think just as an overthinker, sometimes it's just them kind of telling you to like, Trust that they, they, they know how to do their jobs. They, they know what they're looking for. You know, they, like you said earlier, when you said earlier, like if, if you know, you only get two shots in a workout or something, they know why you didn't get more shots and they know what you're capable of, what they, what you've done all year. And, and uh, just, you know, just trying to have fun with it. Um, like I said, you know, I never really thought I'd be in this position and I'm, I'm and uh, that doesn't mean I'm not trying to get make the most out of it and, and get everything I can out of it and, and play at the highest level possible I'm not satisfied by any means but you know just looking around once around really enjoying this whole process and, and having fun with it and control, control and and let everything else fall into place as it may you know work as hard as you can and, and it'll all work out one way or another so just enjoying it uh, playing within yourself and, and, and trust the process I think is is some of the best Chris, before we get into that, what, what's your, you know, we brought up your dad, what's your dad's, what's your dad's advice been through all this? Like, you know, as you guys were leaving to do your own thing, did he tell you guys anything before you, you started the process? Yeah, he's kept it pretty simple. He just says, enjoy it, have fun, you know, work hard and whatever happens, happens really, you know, we never thought this would be the case. <laughs> Situation. So, you know, just go enjoy it and obviously, you know, make the most of it and be aggressive and have fun, but just just have fun, really. Ah, oh, for sure. Yeah, he's, he's, you gotta enjoy it. Your coach. some cool shit. He's your dad now. He's not your coach. Yeah, I, so I told him, I don't, I told him just relax. You know, I don't want, you don't need to text me or give me any advice. Just, you know, we're, you're not my coach anymore. I have four years of that. And, you know, I just want to yeah. kind of enjoy off the court relationship. We can talk about this. Now we can talk about, you know, anything, really talk about basketball, but not, I don't want it to be anything too serious. I just want to enjoy this and, and make the most of it. No doubt, no doubt, man. Not, yeah. not too many people get to sit in them rooms and speak to Tibbs and speak to them guys in the front offices, so definitely enjoy it like you guys have been doing. But um, ahead of, we got, we got playoff basketball tonight, NBA Finals. Uh, who do you think is winning tonight, and who do you think will win the series and why? You got it. I got Boston tonight, first game back at home. They'll be fired up, but I got the Warriors winning in seven. I think the Warriors are winning seven. I okay. think they're just, you know, you saw the last game. If, if two of them pull, pull and Curry are on or Tom Clay Curry or Clay and Jordan, it's, it's over. And, you know, Wiggins has been great. Draymond's just a, the best role guy maybe ever, uh, I think, in the NBA. Looney's playing well, so I think you know they're just they're just too good on offense for for Boston. Yeah, it's tough. I think it's it's a great series. I picked Boston in the beginning, so I guess I'll stick with them. I think they get one tonight. Um, I just think that overall they've just got a really good team. Um, a lot of really good role players. Obviously, Tatum and, and Brown are playing in the right one, um, but I'm not I'm not very confident there. I think I think, I think it's Celtics in six. I think they gotta get it in six at home, but. If it, if it gets back to, to, to Golden State in seven, I think I think it's hard to pick against Golden State and their experience, especially being at home in, their, in that building. Um, so I'm saying Celtics in six, but if it gets to seven, you know, Warriors will probably, probably get the job done. I'm just enjoying the series. It's great basketball. Two really good That's teams. Great basketball. Great basketball. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, fun. it's been fun to watch. No, nah, you can't do that. That wasn't a pick, man. You, can, you can't say, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I got I got Warriors at seven I was I thought the Warriors were gonna win but I, now that I've seen Boston playing like I know they're good but they're fucking yeah. good 
Yeah, they could play, man. So, but I, I think Warriors. <laughs> I think because Clay ain't even been shooting the ball well for the nah. for the past few series. So if it's Come on, man. The, if he gets that going and then Steph is going to do what he does, and then you said, like, Draymond and all those other guys, Wiggins is a big key defensively, too. Just just being able to switch on Tatum and Brown, like, you know, they'll mix that up a little bit. But I, I think the Warriors are seven. I think the biggest difference in that series is the fact that, you know, Boston has a lot more ISO plays. Like, when the ball gets stuck, it's either uh, Jalen Brown or Tatum who's going to get busy. Yeah. On the Warriors, you know how much movement they got. They got shooters everywhere. Draymond is initiating the offense. They're screening flares, coming off handoffs. There's always some type of movement where it's ne- the ball's never sticking for too long. So, I think, you know, that – and, and they're, a- they're able to key in more on, on, on the Celtics, you know, defensively because they – are able to load up when they start going iso ball. So it's going to be tough. They're still, the Celtics still got a chance. You know what I'm saying? They still shot that shit well, game one. If they could do that again at home tonight, like Buddy said, I, I anticipate them, you know, being fired up and being able to shoot the ball well in front of their home crowd. But Warriors are the type of team to shut that shit right up and then they come out and go on a 12 0 run. Wait, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's going to be tough. It's going to be. Yeah. It'll be fun for sure. So people are getting they caught up on game. Well, uh, but the Celtics did their job. They got one, stole one, and now they get to go yeah. home. They got to get at home, so I think they got they got to keep home court. Trying to get trying to get both these games here somehow, but it'll be, it's it's tough. It's tough again. I got a bet with uh, I got a hundred dollar bet with Murray Latavia. I got a hundred dollar bet with, with Latavius if he keeps picking oh, yeah. the Celtics. Oh yeah, we all do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm hoping sure, the Warriors win. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a hundred from get that blue cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let them know. Sure. Let them know. We need that blue cheese. <laughs> even if he, even if the Celtics do win, motherfucker, you still need to give me that hundred. You got it. Shit, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All good. All right, guys. Bellas, Before we wrap, you coming fellas, on, I want to end with something oh, fun. Yeah. Right, yeah. Buddy yeah, Jimmy, right. don't laugh too hard here. Yeah, he's uh, I don't know. First half. Here we go. Here we go. Mistakes. Second half. Second half for uh, I think our off. The look, uh, the, uh, watch uh, the look uh, away right before. Uh, first off, why is this like this? First off, uh, 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 you know, he's got the. Uh, Either one, I don't care. Well, how how is that not how is that not number one? It's got to be. Nah, for sure. Well, Yo, that lead up was crazy. <laughs> that was damn near the Will Smith, wasn't it? Yeah, he had some power on it too. I don't know. I, I didn't know he had that. I didn't know he had it in him. So, <laughs> nah, yeah. Yo, fellas, good I luck think, the rest I don't of the know way, man. What'd you say? <laughs> good luck the rest of the way, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having us, man. Best of luck. Best of luck, fellas. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, y'all.